What is up guys? I missed you guys all so much. Welcome back to another episode of Braces Explained. In today's video, we're going to talk about why your orthodontist changes wires. We're going to review some of the differences between orthodontic wires and why it's so important to not break your brackets and the impact this can have on your overall braces journey. But first, roll the intro. Alright, what's up guys? Dr. Greg here back with another episode of Races Explained. And first of all, I just want to say I am super duper sorry that I've been gone for so long. It was supposed to be a one week break that I took off and then it ended up being another one and another one and life happened. And I can't talk about it in today's video just yet about all the things that are going on in my life. But I will be talking about it in a future video, so please stay tuned for that because I want to share it, but I just can't share it yet. I have been talking to a few of you guys on the Braces Club, so thank you guys so much for your concern. I am doing well. Everything in my life is going really great, but it took away a little bit of my time to make these last few videos, but I'm trying to get back on track, so hopefully we'll be going with these weekly videos moving forward, but I will keep you guys posted and try to be a little bit more interactive and transparent with you all. Please excuse me if I mess up anything in today's video. I feel as though I'm pretty rusty, even though it hasn't been that long. It's really weird getting back in front of here and trying to get into the motions and, you know, making sure all my settings are right. So if anything is a little bit shoddy on today's video, apologies in advance. So let's go ahead and get started with this video. But if you guys forgot since last time, what we do before each video is we go down there and we destroy that thumbs up button as well as hit the subscribe button if we haven't yet already. Okay, so the timestamps are going to be here and we're going to go through all of these things in today's video. But let's go ahead and get started with a little recap on the difference between orthodontic wires. And there's a bunch of different types of wires. But in today's video, I want to review two of them. One of them is nickel titanium, which is going to be the point of today's video. And the other one is stainless steel. And the difference between these wires is that nickel titanium has shape memory, which means that if you take this wire and you bend it in half and you let go, it's going to spring right back to its original shape. And this is really advantageous because, you know, if you can imagine all the teeth are being crooked, if we put in this nickel titanium wire, it's going to want to spring back to its original shape bringing the teeth with it so that they're aligned and get the general arch form correct. This will work out any rotations, any up down movements, things like that. On the flip side, stainless steel, when you bend the wire, it'll hold that shape. So these have different roles in orthodontics. The nickel titanium that we're gonna talk about in today's video is the earlier wires in your treatment. Whereas when we're in our stainless steel, that's a little bit more of a rigid wire. So we can use that to detail bend, you know, specifically move one tooth up, down, rotate it. And I have an entire video where we talk about what these detail bends are. I'm going to link it out in this corner so you guys can go ahead and check that out if you want to know more about stainless steel wires. Because in today's video, we're talking mostly about nickel titanium. And this is a really, really neat wire. This wire was actually invented by NASA like years ago. And it works phenomenally for orthodontics. But the thing is, we can't just have one nickel titanium wire. It's not like a one size fits all. Because if we were to just start off with like the biggest nickel titanium wire that we have, it wouldn't be able to fit in all your teeth. It might pop off the brackets. It might deliver too much force for specific teeth. So what we do is we start off with a really small wire and we work our way up. And that's pretty much the main point of today's video is how do we know what wires to start with and how do we work our way up, things like that. So like there are two different types of wire, remember night high versus stainless steel, there's different types of sizes for these wires and they can either be round or rectangular. And this is for both nickel titanium as well as stainless steel. So when you hear your orthodontist saying, you know, 014 wire, 018 wire, 16 by 22 wire, these are all different types and measurements of the wires. And what they mean is 014 is 0.014 inches in diameter. So it's really, really thin. But as the numbers get bigger, it's a thicker size wire. Same thing with 16 by 22. It's 0 0.016 inches tall by 0 0.022 inches wide. So it's a rectangular wire. But what we generally start off with is we start off with a small round wire. So this is either going to be like an 012, 014, 016. And this wire is better than using a rectangular wire at first because this can pick up any rotations. If you could think about it, a round thin wire is easier to bend than a rectangular wire because a rectangular wire has more metal holding it together, right? So a lot of the times your orthodontist is going to start you off with these light round nickel titanium wires. And as your teeth start to align and work a little bit more, we might go up to a bigger round nickel titanium wire before we go into a rectangular nickel titanium wire, okay? So these round wires are really, really great for working out any rotations, any up or down or things like that. So you might be thinking, well, if these are so good at lining up everything, why do we even need a rectangular wire? And that's a really good question. The reason why we need a rectangular wire is because if you can imagine the slot for the brackets like this, right? And if there's a round wire, this can help work any brackets that are up or down or that need any rotations like this. But if there's a movement that needs the tooth to be torqued, you know, moving the root, then we might need a full slot wire. So we put in a rectangular wire 
to make it so that we can upright the root and do movements like that. So like I said, a round wire can be used to align the teeth, but then we use our rectangular wires to work on the roots and getting those movements and angulations done properly. So let's take a look at a patient case. We're gonna look at a patient that had a small round nickel titanium wire and we evaluated it and moved it up to a bigger round nickel titanium wire, okay? So if you remember, this is a patient from a couple of videos ago. We actually had a video of us putting her lower braces on. So if you're interested in that, I'm gonna link it out in this corner. But first thing we do is we have her untied and we take her wire out. And what you can see over here is that that wire is still expressing a little bit of force. So you can see that one tooth is just a little bit further back. And because of the shape memory, we want to bring that tooth forward. But since that wire is a little bit light, we're actually gonna upgrade to a bigger wire. We're gonna change this 014 night tie to an 018 night tie, which is about a 30% thicker wire. And over here, what you can see me doing is I'm sizing the wire. So I wanna make sure that the wire isn't too long so it doesn't poke the back of her mouth. So now that we have this wire sized to the right length, what we can do is go ahead and insert that wire really carefully and make sure that it's not going too far back to poke her cheek. Now, since this wire is a little bit thicker than the previous wire, it's gonna deliver a bit more force. And you know, those teeth that aren't fully aligned, you can see that it's gonna be pulling those teeth forward. So if the 014 got that tooth part of the way there, this upgraded wire, this thicker wire, can now be used to bring that tooth a little bit more forward to its more ideal position. So I'd expect that once we tie in this arch, she'll be at a good spot so that we can move up to another wire. And here you can see me going back, a few of those O-rings didn't fully go on the bracket, so I went on there and I tied it on a little bit more correctly and appropriately so that it's fully expressing the force. And with that wire fully tied in, we can go ahead and use this really cool instrument called the distal end cutter. And what we'll do is we'll cut that extra wire so it doesn't poke her cheek and she should be good to go. So there's one thing I really wanna drive home about this and it's the fact that you don't need a new wire at every single appointment. I see a lot of people on here and on the braces club that are saying like, oh my God, my orthodontist didn't change my wire. Does that mean I'm not making progress? That's not true. If you can see, sometimes we just need a little bit more time. We need a tooth just to be tied in a little bit more to bring that tooth forward. So just because you're not getting a new wire at every appointment doesn't mean that you're not making progress. In her case, she did need a new wire, so we were able to upgrade her to a newer wire. But if she had a little bit more crowding and I wasn't ready to move her up to that 0 and 8 wire yet, we would have reused that wire and it doesn't mean that she's not making progress. It just means that we need a little bit more work on that wire. So this brings me to the point of why it's so important to be careful with the foods you eat to not break a bracket because you know how you've heard a broken bracket can increase your treatment length? Well, this is why. If you can imagine a bracket that breaks off and that tooth starts to move, well then when we put the bracket back on it, we can't stay in the same wire because that tooth might've moved and that wire might be too big to bring that tooth back, right? So in certain cases, if a bracket breaks and a tooth starts shifting, what we might have to do is go back into a smaller or thinner wire in order to retrieve it and then work our way back up to the wire that we were previously in. So this can significantly increase your treatment length, especially if that tooth has moved quite a bit, right? So like I've always said, you wanna be really careful about the foods that you eat and the things that you do to not break your braces. And this is one of the main reasons why. This is why breaking brackets can increase your treatment length. It's not because of the broken bracket, it's because we have to go back in wires to a thinner wire in order to work our way back up to where we were. But that's pretty much all I have for you guys when it comes up to what we look for when we're changing wires and the impact these different wires can have on your braces journey. If you guys have any questions I didn't answer in today's video, please let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up as well as subscribe if you haven't already. Like I said, I hope to see you guys back here next week and I'm pretty sure I'll be back on it. And apologies again for missing out over these past couple of weeks. But I am back and I'm very happy to be back. But for now, Dr. Greg, out.